What is up everyone, Ducky O'Brien here and welcome to another Astroneer Automation Guide. This time I'm going to be going over 3 ways to create a clock cycle in Astroneer. Now these are all work in progresses, they are not complete by any means, but I thought I would share this so that it would give you guys an idea how to create clock cycles. Now I'm going to have 3 methods right now, this is my creative save file. Uh, I'm going to go over that, mine is the worst and I'm going to go over that first. And then we have one made by Kippa's Troll and another one by Timmy Thick. Uh, these two guys dropped by while I was streaming on Twitch and they're kind enough to share their builds with me. Kip built his while I was streaming. He joined my save file here. And you can notice that uh, he's his uh, scrap platform right there is their beautiful elegant solution. But I'm so excited about automation because it can do a lot of things. So if you check here, I have two medium generators. They're connected to power sensors. If you look here, it's power gained or power lost. Power gained or power lost. And this one is connected to this generator, but it'll activate or switch states of the other generator. Now this is the same. If you look here, it's a constant cycle of on and off. Basically a series of one, ones and zeros on a timed frequency so that you can use that to power a clock cycle. Now this is definitely the worst way because it uses medium generators and you know it requires constant input of carbon. So <laughs> anyways, once you have this going you can use this signal to power a lot of things. I'm gonna fly up here because that this this is pretty noisy but anyways. Now here's another thing we have to figure out. How do we introduce a delay into our system? Uh, basically, for a regular circuit, you would use a capacitor, so we decided to use a small battery. Now, there's a problem here. We cannot really actively use a power sensor because it was connected to this if you just connect it regularly. So we had to use an extender, and the extender acts as a diode allowing the current to flow in only one direction. So it'll flow from the system into the battery and charge it, but the battery itself will never power anything in this system triggering you know these power sensors brilliant <laughs> this uh, diode solution was it was invented by kit Pestrol. he he thought of it on the fly what a smart guy anyways i'm gonna have uh, links to their twitch profiles in the description below if you want to check them out kip does uh, i think he streams once in a while and i don't think timmy thick streams but you know i want to give credit where credit is due I could not have come up with these systems on my own unless I try for a really long time. So, you know, I appreciate the help they gave me. And hopefully by passing this on to you guys, it can help you guys create a, your own system, maybe your own mini computer. Anyways, here we have it. We have a cycle going. It's powering up a battery to use as a capacitor, which can delay the signal. Now, there's a couple of issues that we haven't figured out, like we can't really actively use the power sensor on this. Because once it's full, it can activate something, and then, uh, yeah, after that, it kinda goes downhill. Like, <laughs> uh, we'll have to figure that out later. I'm gonna turn around the sensor. Basically, when it's discharging, it kind of activates over and over and over again. Uh, but one other thing too is when you get the battery fully charged, you need to fully discharge it right away. That's why I have it connected to a thumper. Uh, it's not the best method, so I'm going to go come back to it. But anyways, we have a cycle here. The extender is a diode and the battery is a capacitor. There you have it, folks. Method number one. Let's move on to method number two, Kip's method. The lovely and very elegant solution of using storage to power your clock. So we have two arms here. They're just automated. There's no logic. They have, um, whatchamacallit. They're only picking up carbon. You can use anything. It doesn't matter. And here we have a storage sensor, full or not full. So basically, when the carbon is put on there, it'll trigger the full, and then it will activate your circuit as on. And when it's, there you go. When it's not full, it will turn it off. When it's on, it'll turn it off. It'll just cycle back and forth. There you have it. This is very simple. You can look at the light. It'll tell you how it's going to activate your circuits. So we have a very reliable zero and one cycle that's slower and much usable, much more usable than this method, which is too quick. The generators are too quick. 
So Kim's method is very simple. Okay, it looks cool too. It's just two arms. They're picking up the carbon. See, this one picks it up from here, drops it off here. This one picks it up from here and drops it off here. And because of the delay, the physical delay of the arms moving the carbon around, that's the timing you need to kind of power your cycle. So again, this was by Kip as Troll. Excellent work, Kip. Now we have another method using soil canisters. This one blew my mind. It's invented by Timmy Fick. And uh, this is his system right here. I invented the delay circuits, so I can take credit for that. I'm not completely useless here. But uh, if you look here, we have a storage sensor, full or empty. And I branched it out here. And it, I attached it to the soil sensor. The I mean the medium soil canister itself. And then I have it attached to this soil canister. And then to a horn. Now going to this one, I have one that's full or not full. Again, this one was full or empty. This is full or not full. I have it branching out, attached to a horn. And attached to another soil canister. Again, I have another storage sensor here. Full or not full, like yet again, attached to a horn, and that's it. Now, here's what I'm doing here. This is Timmy's genius method. Uh, if you look here, this is basically just filling up a medium soil canister. And when it hits full, it'll trigger the storage sensor. And it will activate this horn and this soil canister to start... There we go, depositing. Once this is full... It activates that horn and activates this little canister. And when this is full, it activates this horn and it just waits. Well, th when this is empty, these start emptying. And I changed it to full or not full because if it was full or empty, it would never reach empty. But anyways, I'm going to go over what's doing exactly. This is your clock cycle right here. Based on the timing it takes for a medium soil canister to be filled and then emptied, that is your frequency right there. That's your full cycle, I mean. That's your period, all right? And then here we have it activate these soil canisters, which are delay circuits. Now, this is delayed based on how many soil canisters you need to fill that medium silo, that medium soil canister. I have it set to three, but you can change it to one for it to be faster. You can change it up to... You know however many soil canisters can fit into that thing so i i use three and basically because it's waiting for it to fill however time it takes for one soil canister these small ones to go in there that's your basic unit of time now you can measure your circuit based on soil canisters this is an ingenious method <laughs> uh it's not complete but my main goal when i was streaming was how can i play a horn but delay the next horn and I have it repeat. So I, I, I accomplished that, but it's not perfect. I'm going to go into why. You look here, filled, placed, placed, and placed. So the delay is consistent because again, I'm using solar canisters and I, you know, they're automated and it's beautiful. It's elegant. <laughs> I'm going crazy here, guys. But yeah. So here, here's the problem when it empties. Now this will empty, and then it'll, it'll trigger this and empty this. But it's full or not full, so it's not perfect. It needs to be full and then empty, but it, it'll never empty. So it'll never refresh the state. So I'm trying to work on that part, but the way I have it set up, when this fills up completely, it will always work. When this empties, this will not work that well. So, eh, works half the time. There you go. There you go. There you go again. Perfect. Now we have a usable circuit with a clock cycle with delay that you can customize accurately. And this is incredibly useful. So again, thank you to Timmy Fick. What a s smart and elegant design. Thank you to Kip as well. All of these people coming up with better systems than me. I can't wait to see what you guys have in store. Like, if you guys have any solutions to any of the problems that I listed here, with the battery as the capacitor, with this soil circuit, 
with this like feel free to leave a comment down below if you have your own way to create a clock cycle i would love to hear how you did it please give me a comment uh i will definitely give you guys credit if you share your methods with me uh this video is a little informal because it's not a complete guide it's a work in progress so i i made it a bit informal usually i script my videos and i try to make them as short as possible but i'm so excited to share this with you guys that you know i just had to make this video because believe it or not i love production lines and i'm going to be spending the next few probably months of astroneer trying to figure out automation and how to use it now now we have clock cycles. The next thing to figure out is how to create gates. The AND gate, the OR gate, and the NOT gate are the three basic gates that you need to create the rest of logic. And NAND, XOR, or whatever you want. And once you have those logical gates created, we can, we can make a calculator. Like an actual calculator. So, I mean, there's, there's ways to do it without making gates, but, uh, you know, I, I, want, I want to have the gates in there. <laughs> Anyways, there you have it, folks. I hope this helped. Uh, I really love Astroneer, and automation makes it a completely different game. Anyways, thank you so much for dropping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, any questions, comments, things you'd like for me to cover, things you'd like to see, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll try my best to answer any questions. Uh, but yeah, there you have it, folks. I stream this every Tuesdays and Thursdays if you want to check it out on Twitch. Um, I try to keep a schedule, but sometimes I end up streaming it a little late. You know? <laughs> Can't be helped. But there you have it, folks. I'll have my Twitch linked in the des description below as well. Anyways, as always, hope you guys are staying safe and sane out there. I'll catch you guys next time. I still can't get over how elegant Automation is... <laughs>